Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. We would absolutely love it if you could like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check that bell so you never miss an episode. And of course, while you're doing that, I am going to read some quotes from last episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. <clears throat> Quote number one. Richie looking into a pond of alligators. Which character should I play today? <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, normally, I don't read who the quote is from, but I'm going to in this case. Uh, Lady of the Wild says, I promised myself once I caught up on Once Upon a Witchlight that I would donate to the channel. Thank you guys for all the laughs and the hard work that you give us. And they gave us 10 bucks. Thank yes. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Call that out and say thank, thank you. you. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Uh, the next one. Uh, the scream I scrumped when I saw a new episode finally posted on YouTube. We're glad you're happy. And lastly, now every time I think about or say, yeah, I can be a bit of a scamp. I have to do the 45 degree torso bend afterwards. <laughs> so be sure to leave a comment below and let us know what you think of this episode. And maybe your comment will be read next time. In the meantime, if you want to support the channel, make sure you check out our merch shop. Become a patron over on Patreon to check out our brand new campaign called Shroud over Salt Marsh. And go to thecrookedmoon.com today to pre-order your copy of The Crooked Moon. Thank you. Shucks! Gosh, I have a real problem here. I have such a big problem with TTRPGs. I don't think there's any solution. Hey, Gary, what's the matter, buddy? I heard you yelling from all the way over there. Yeah, I'm real frustrated, Andy. I can't lie to you, my dearest friend. What's going on? Why don't you tell me about it? I'm running the most epic TTRPG campaign. The big bad is the one and only Tia Matthew. And my players are so distracted with my boring old kitchen table. Every single time I'm doing a cool anime monologue, I'm catching them checking out thirst traps on social media. It's very rude. Oh my gosh, that does sound like a problem. Well, do I have the solution for you? Wow, I previously thought there was no solution. Why don't you tell me more? Gladly, Gary. Game Theory Tables is your solution. Whoa! They're running a Kickstarter that's live right now. Their Kickstarter is featuring their brand new futuristic table that's gonna change the way we play TTRPGs at home. It's called The Arena. Whoa, that really does sound like it's futuristic. Fit for a cyberpunk dystopia. The Arena is a fully connected, digitally integrated gaming table. It uses fully functional touchscreen operation. It has a 4K custom digital screen. Whoa, that's better than 3K. And it's Wi-Fi enabled for in-person or remote play for up to over 20 people. Wow, so this is like the opposite of the time I got thrown out of the zoo. I can tap on the glass. So you're saying it also works for remote play? That's right, Gary. Gosh, so I can finally play with Keith again after he moved in with his new girlfriend. But that's not all. <gasps> the screen is scratch resistant. Whoa! And there's plenty of integrated power ports for you to charge all of your devices while you're playing. That's perfect for me, because I'm always accidentally chucking nails onto my gaming board instead of rolling dice. How do you mix up those two? They look very similar, Andy. How about you don't throw stones at those who live in glass houses? <laughs> And right now, as a special thank you from Game Theory, all of their tables and accessories are all at a discounted price during the Kickstarter. Whoa, that's awesome. There's so much stuff, I'm gonna max out my credit card debt. <laughs> that's right. Oh. Hold on, I, I can't hear you. That's exactly right, Gary. Right now is the time to get one of these tables because Whoa. they're going to be most affordable, even for you after your multiple divorces. She took everything, Andy. She even took the house. I'm living in my Ford Fiesta. I'm, <laughs> I'm really sorry, Gary. So now is the time to get your very own game theory table called The Arena by using the link below in the description. And that's just a theory, a game theory. Tables, now live on Kickstarter. 
Thank you for being here with us today. It is Wednesday. We are Legends of Evantress. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Rich. Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower, and through grand halls past Lockenber, dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second, love defiled by spite, the third, a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither, from yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire, a ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things, but listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there, a song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane, around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame, no better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne, the prince then found a toy of bone, lettered blocks stacked to the sky, when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass, marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion, each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear. This would not do. His favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place. Through toil this crack he would erase. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toys placed in a chest, with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch light hour. You are all standing outside a fallen oak tree, larger than any oak tree that you've ever seen in your entire life. You know this place to be Loom Larch, the home of Scabatha Nightshade, Granny Nightshade. And it is here, in the darkness, beneath the canopy of these massive trees that surround you, that you find yourself this day. You just previously spent the night under, under the boughs of a, of a treant, one that housed a group of rambunctious children, all of them having escaped from this place, all of them returning to this place today in one valiant attempt to free the rest of the children that have been imprisoned here, that have been captured and made to do the, the labor and work for this awful hag, a hag whose past you are familiar with, that you've learned. You know the darkness that lurks within this place, but where you stand now, it feels almost peaceful. A soft wind rustles the leaves around you and cools your skin. The darkness isn't fully dark. It's, even though it's morning, it feels almost like twilight. And the lightning bugs that zip around you illuminate this space in a warm and cozy glow. The light that emanates from inside of this fallen tree 
warms up the entire area of what is known to you as the Goblin Market. And it's here that you stand looking at three stalls, one canopied in blue, one in green, one in red, both of them manned by goblins. Uh, none of them seem to be paying too much attention to you, all but one. A goblin stands in front of you wearing a tunic of green, orange and green striped pants. And atop uh, his goblinoid head is what is clearly a candy apple. Looking at him, it is not it is not the image that you would expect from a scarecrow. This is not a candy apple helmet, but his head has actually been transformed into a candy apple. The eyes recessed in, you can see the um, the pale meat of the of the apple itself as the the candied coating drips <coughs> down his face. All the while, he's smacking his head, seeming very confused and and distracted, even though he attempts to speak to all of you. As he calls out to the uh, to the maggot in his head and tells it to quiet itself, um, he takes a moment, and you can see that he is focusing uh, really hard on something for a minute before he looks up at you, and a smile forms on his face. Welcome to the Goblin Market. I am so sorry for my outburst. How can we help you? Are you looking for delicious delicacies? A meeting with our lovely hostess, Scamp of the Night Shade? Or simply a lovely walk through the beautiful gardens outside Loom Lurch? How can I help you? I am Chucklehead. <laughs> Literally not making it up. Not as the same. Okay? How does Gideon react to that? <laughs> 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 well, shucks. Is that a clown name? <laughs> now, now, hold on, hold on. The name, the name Chucklehead. Uh, you associated or themed around clowns in any way? No, and you can just call me Chuck. <sighs> Chuck. He's all right. We can do it. Yeah. How about like it's Charles? It's short for Chucklehead. How about like Charles or Charlie? Just keep if it totally like. away from Chuckles in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, if you like. All right, Charlie, what do you think? Um, one caramel apple, please. You see his face kind of fall a little bit in sadness as he looks over towards the blue, um, the blue candied wagon. You can make your way over there if you want candied apples. Uh, oh, well, what the fuck are you selling then? <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm the manager here. I oversee the goblin markets to make sure that everything's all right. Oh. Uh, to make sure that they're fully stopped, to make sure none of the children have escaped, to make sure that the, t the toy soldiers are doing their patrols to um, to set up any meetings with Gab of the Nightshade and to make sure the children haven't escaped. <laughs> wow, all of that sounds really important. It really is, and I'm the only goblin that can do it here. I, it may not look like it to you, but I am a goblin. Um, a horrible curse befell me. Oh my god! <laughs> What's wrong with your face? <laughs> uh, excuse me, that is very that is not nice. <laughs> well, but it's true. You got a little something going on here. I am currently dripping mil melted candy. Uh, I do understand that to be the case. Uh, from your face. You understand, man? Understand from that. the entirety of my head. Greg, oh, you can't just go around <laughs> asking people what's wrong with their faces. And he turns around to show you that the candy's also dripping down the back of his head. Oh. <laughs> is his shoulder sloppy? He looks defeated. You see him hit his hit on his head and the, the candy strings from his head to his fingers. I told you to shut up. Oh. Uh, well, uh, Do you see the maggot? No. Oh. <laughs> Do you have voices in your head too? No, I have a capricious little insectoid creature, a bug creature, a, I don't know, a worm. I don't know what you call it. He's in my head, Does and he? uh, he's currently eating what's in there. I'll be dead in uh, muck tops, so. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this just keeps getting worse. <laughs> 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 no, wait, 
Wait, are you are you saying that you're cursed to have a, a, a rotten apple head where it's going to be slowly eaten well, by a worm? Excuse me, it ain't rotten presently. I mean, it's, it's infected with a worm. I didn't put it in there. So Who did she? What cursed me? Can you say her name? I would prefer not to. Do you want to buy candy, or are you here to? Does all the candy have worms in it? <laughs> You can get candy with worms in it if you want. Uh, no thanks. We, uh, we're here on important business. Oh, yeah, because Mike was standing when he DM'd, huh? Oh. Mm. <laughs> it's Mike adjustment time. Torvac's gonna do the same. I can use a little bit of Mike adjustment, too. It's you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of that real quick. Then we go, fellas. What do you think? Anyway. Uh, oh, we would love some candy. And if you're taking meetings with Scabatha, it's cat scab of <laughs> That's exactly what we're looking for. Well, I could definitely set up a meeting for you. Uh, what is the nature of your business? Um, Wart removal. Just let her Resurrection know. of a long dead loved one. Mm. Mm. Just let her know that... Uh, Acquisition of land. Just let her know <laughs> that uh, we uh, have some dirt on our sisters. All right. Sure. Oh, I could probably man. pencil you in for some time next week for a uh, uh, for a meeting of that nature. Well, uh, you see, he opens up a small week. little um, a small little notebook that is bound in um, in these beautiful purple and green leaves, uh, and inside you see mottled paper. Uh, that is pressed with different flowers and fungi and things. And he begins to start scratching some uh, some notes in there. Uh, what did you say your name was? Uh, the name is Criminal Crew. How do you spell that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know how many Cremies in the Feywild? Oh, I can spell the Cremie. It's you know how the... many Crews in the Feywild? Oh, I can spell Crew. It's the love part. Oh, it's a L-E. Oh, all right. I was going to write A. Oh. I try to look in the book. I want to see what like if there's actually like <laughs> like writings and appointments in there, or if he's just like bullshitting us. Ooh. Okay, uh, roll a perception check. Uh, oh, we play D and D. Also, Torbeck is nosy. <laughs> Sly <laughs> Cooper. Oh, that's a seventeen with a oh. plus five perception is going to be a twenty-three. Uh, you you look in and you see that there are um, there are notes um, that say. Um, that say names and reasons for business and what he is, what time frame he's giving. But you also see that dispersed between them are um, little bits of um, scribbling where it seems that he is responding to the bug in his head and that he is um, distracted and writing Jeez. down um, responses or the things that it's saying to him um, between all of these things. Uh, next to yours, you see that he very clearly spelled Kremi and crew, uh, incorrectly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he also spelled the la LA, uh, yeah, even though Kermi he la crow. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and next to it, he puts, um, dirt on the sisters, um, Scabatha out until evening, um, already a more important meeting. Oh, oh. it's got to taste good notes. What, wait, you don't have anything sooner? I mean, this is this is important business. It may be important business to you, but there are many that come with uh, dirt on her sisters. If you had the head of a sister, or if you had oh. uh, something no. valuable that one of the sisters was longing to own, uh, if you had, uh, you know, something of that nature, that would be one thing. Uh, she's out for the day. She's uh, actually in Yawn presently. Um, we currently have another uh, another patron that is here uh, who, who came before you um, first come first serve with uh, menial tasks menial business and so uh, as yours does not rank higher than hers uh, she is currently in the parlor waiting uh, and then uh, I, it's really up to Granny Nightshade whether she's willing to take anyone for the rest of the week but last I heard she's she's got a lot of toy making to do so Cranny, why don't you show them the show them the thing we got, man? What, what you like the, the spool, the silver spool? No, man. Well, I was thinking, you know, like 
Will's dagger. I'm sorry, did I hear you say Will? No, no. Are you friends of that rap scallion? No. Uh, sure no, we're that. actually hunting him for the bounty. Oh, he said Will's dagger. Oh, that's exactly like, right. Like yeah. Will. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, that is my mistake. I have. It's he, he's in my ear right now. Yeah, you're half right. Uh, right in the uh, ear. Uh, yeah, you yeah, might have to wait one second, just amongst the selves. Take your time. I'm gonna head over here, sit on this stump. <laughs> Argue with my fella. Well, well, uh, well, I mean, while you discuss, I think I might use the jelly beans. Frost, Wait, hold on, Frost, I mean, Frost disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> and he is not here for the remainder of the time. Wait, no. And you no. don't know where he went. Oh, and it's the crazy Blue. magic of the Feywild, all of a sudden he's just gone. Frost right clicked uh, yeah. Greco's window pane and just set to follow. <laughs> no, I was, gonna, that's really I was gonna say, we actually watch him Benjamin Button all the way to a baby and then vanish out of his <laughs> <laughs> They even have so, a stuff lever gun. It's so strange how it happens, but just all of a sudden he's gone. Yeah. And so oh, uh, Frost disappears. Oh, um, Alas, earwax. <laughs> And so, um, so this goblin, um, you hear him mumbling to himself as he's talking to the creature in his head as he goes and takes a seat on a, uh, a large carved out stump that functions like a, uh, it almost looks like a small throne that he's clearly made for himself um, to sit and watch over the goblin market. Uh, he allows you free reign of this place um, while you decide that you want to talk amongst yourselves. Uh, you can see that the goblins in each one of these stalls seem to be very busy. Uh, and there is a, they are unpacking and filling up the different shelves with candy. You can see that there are children that keep leaving Loom Lurch and um, scuttling towards the back of these market areas with baskets full of, um, different treats and the goblins are working directly with them to get everything stocked. You see a little sign um, on the red wagon that says one treat, one trinket. And that there's a little, that there's a little bowl where you can put the trinkets. You don't even have to interact with the goblin should you choose not to. You can simply take what you would like, place a trinket in, um, uh, in payment and sample all of the things that you would like to try. And this feels, fairly private and it feels um it feels fairly cozy you you imagine that you do have a, a significant amount of privacy to be able to talk amongst yourself in whatever way you need to and frost is gone by the way <laughs> damn he's just disappeared i was gonna ask frost to remind me what our fucking plan was <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Loom of the Ligger is going. Yeah. 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 Frost eating candy and getting slooped into oblivion. I, I, I believe, mean, what the hell, Frost? I, I believe we were sent to create a distraction. No, but that's what I remember it, but I remember yeah. the, the dagger, but I was going to keep that. Because it's been a while, um, Thank you. the entire purpose of you being here is to help Will rescue the children. Yes. Right. You uh, also have tasks of your own. So how he, his plan for rescuing the children was you'd come to the goblin market, find some way to gain audience with Scabatha. So that way, while they're executing their plan to cause a distraction and rescue the children outside of Loom Lurch, you could um, distract Scabatha so she doesn't know what's going on and mm -hmm. then find a way to sneak deeper into Loom Lurch and rescue the children that are in the workshops inside. Will would then meet you inside and help with that while the rest of the kids were going back to, um, uh, to their camp. Uh, you know that you also need to make your way to her study or whatever room she would keep the paintings in because you have a deal with Bavorna. And so you need to steal some paintings yeah. for her. So um, they're going to handle the, the distraction? They're handling the distractions really? outside. Oh. You will be responsible for everything inside. We've got a tank, Scabatha. I see. So basically this sneak. entire yeah. place is run by um, child chat. labor. Sacrifices kids. And so I, in my head, does it, at least for me, I was thinking that I would keep secret that we have that until we're in the room with Scabatha, so not to like that, uh, get them on edge about that kids. That was what Will had explained to you is that at, at its worst, like, not at its worst, like if things got bad when you were talking with Scabatha, you could show her that. Mm. I would say you would imagine that showing that to, to Chuck, to Charles, to Charlie isn't going to do much for you uh, because he doesn't understand the nature of these things. Scabatha is going to be the person that will pay more attention to that piece of cloth. Um, 
it seems like the um, your your tactic to gain audience isn't good enough. So you might have to try and figure out something else you think that she she might like, or you know, right. ask questions and manipulate him <clears throat> into figuring right. out how to get in there. <clears throat> Torbank was also thinking about the spool. Well, Torbeck's keeping it safe, and Torbeck isn't sure that we should reveal that we have the spool. It might work to get us an audience with her, but then she'll know that we were there with her sister. I mean, that, that's, that's a good point. I, I mean, did we even still have the spool, or did the, the King of Hearts take it? Tormex got it. Oh, you it. have it. All right. Okay. It's Tormex's sure. filthy sack. It feels like it's been two months. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> Next to yeah. Tormex's filthy sack. <laughs> that's well, the best place to put it, Tormex. <laughs> you think if we show this guy the spool, I mean, he's going to have any freaking clue what that is? Well, seems like he he's got a. won't, but Scabatha will. But either way, Torbeck doesn't think it's the best plan. Just an option. Why do you think that she's so keen on child labor? Wouldn't I feel like kids are really shitty at all sorts of, <laughs> they suck. Yeah, but their little fingers can get deep into dangerous machinery <laughs> where big hands can't get. <laughs> We can call it a small <laughs> crawl spaces, I guess. <sighs> Which, yeah, actually, now you're right. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, trial casino, I get, but like this whole operation seems a little ill advised. That but. makes sense. I mean, again, how many times were there, you know, carnival rides and stuff where you couldn't get your big paws in there? We should have just hired kids to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just had Torbeck figure it out, and that oh, worked. Yeah. Well, I don't know, like none of the time. So. <laughs> and has uh, crazy weird flares. Oh, man, if you have gone through your horrible torture before, <laughs> eh? Damn it. We want to run the best carnival anyone's ever seen. Torbeck's like a Swiss army knife <laughs> now. Well, we yeah, will stretch our arms strong. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get uh, the opposite of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Frost continuously rips in and out Frost of the Frost isn't here. Frost yeah. 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 What was that? Um, <laughs> while we're talking, uh, you will slowly notice that Torbeck is inching like ever so slightly farther and farther away from the group towards the trinket bowl mm -hmm. to, to leave a uh, trinket and take uh, a treat. Okay, what trinket are you leaving? Uh, my, the, my hourglass with no sand. Uh, he... he looks at it and he has this awful feeling when he looks at it, uh, remembering the time that we encountered that horrific creature mm. uh. and doesn't want to keep it anymore mm. and thinks that getting rid of it for free candy is a very good deal. So I will drop the hourglass with no sand into the bowl and take a treat of my choice, you, I suppose. Uh, yeah, you walk up to the green stall, the one in the middle, and you place the hourglass into the bowl and you see that the uh, the wall of candy that has been erected in this stall um, shimmers magically. And you realize that there had been a magical barrier protecting this. You couldn't just come up and take what you wanted. But you've placed the trinket there and now there is uh, a plethora of candy for you to choose from. Um, you see all sorts of, and this one, uh, disgusting candies. Um, you see uh, beetles encased in hard candy. You see lollipops made from compacted ants. Uh, you see jellied worms. Yeah. Um, but you also see um, a handful of what look like really delicious candies. Um, this a strange butterfly lollipop that looks like it's made out of um that's made out of tiny little tiny bubbles all fused together you see that some of them pop and a soft pink uh, hue emanates from it and it smells um it smells like cotton candy but like the most intense cotton candy you've ever smelled in your Whoa. life um you see small little um what look like bluebells but are clearly um like a, a hardened sugar mm. and um, they when the light hits them you can see these tiny um, veins running through them like you would on a real bluebell when the light oh. hits it um, but it looks like it almost flows with this like delicious um, nectar uh, and there are there are tons of candies here for you to choose from 
Uh, Torbeck will go through the ones that look gross and be like, oh, Torbeck's had enough bones lately. <laughs> and take the butterfly one. Okay. It looks delightful. And, uh, and, and hoping that nobody basically noticed, you know, even though he's just he's trying to be like sneaky, but not really. Will like sneak back over with the, with the, the butterfly light pop and be like enjoying it. So now what? Oh, how is that, Torbeck? This? Yeah. It's de- how is it? Uh, it's absolutely delicious. It when it hits your when it hits your tongue, it almost evaporates uh, for a second, and then your tongue is the entirety of your tongue is um, consumed with this sweetness, this flavor that you've never tasted before. It is almost milky and sugary at the same time, but light and airy. And as you as you continue to lick at this butterfly lolly, you feel giggly. Oh. Uh, well, Greco, Torbeck doesn't want to overstate or hype up the candy too much, but this briefly made Torbeck forget that he's a hideous, depressed monster <laughs> that has voices in the back of his head for just an instant. And perhaps Torbeck finally understands the meaning of happiness. Wow, that's really strong stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I will pull out a little rock that floats and can be a floating rock. <laughs> Are you going to get in the bowl? And I will try to put it in the bowl. It floats just above the bowl. And it just hovers there. The fuck? Uh, Oh, I have a loot. How big is the bowl? (laughs) It's tiny. It's a tiny wooden loot with cat hair strings. That's great. It's a funny candy because had you not said that, I wouldn't even thought about it. I would just thought about the rock it clangs as the tiny wooden loot falls into the bowl. Uh, the wooden loot falls into the bowl, and you watch as the um, the barrier shimmers and the candy appears for you. I'll take whatever. So, Mikey, in his heart of hearts, King of Hearts, wants a Flintstones push pop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if they don't have a Flintstones push pop, what else, you can roll. If I roll, I can roll forward or just grab something. You pull out the unicorn's push pop. And it is a it is a tubular uh, frosted <gasps> candy, and it shimmers um, it shimmers in a beautiful um, pale pale blue and white. It looks like it is covered in glitter. Um, and as you turn the base of it, the unicorn horn slowly climbs out of it. Um, as uh, as you take your first bite of it, you see oh. that the inside is filled with swirling rainbows of color. Oh. Uh, you feel warm on the inside. Um, mm. With with every lick and bite oh. of this thing, it feels like a winter's fire has been kindled inside of your soul. Yeah, but damn, damn that's good. <laughs> 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 the seating around to get to that joke. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm one of those. Uh, there better be more than one. I'm gonna walk up to it and I'm gonna take look through all my bag of shit, uh, and I'm gonna pull out one of Frost's fingernails that I have <laughs> oh, <laughs> when they all fell out, oh, and I'm gonna put it in the trinket bowl. Uh, it seems to accept it, and uh, you are able to grab one of the unicorn push pops. <clears throat> Oh my god. <laughs> Same flavor mm-hmm. as this? Mm. This is one of the greatest things I've ever tasted it's in my life. It's very nice and light. Yeah, light. Get when we open the carnival back up, maybe a new concession idea. Well, I think the concessions look uh, mighty good, but I'm not supporting the commerce in any kind of goblin market. And that's because Whoa. I have morals, not because I've forgotten any of the tricks. To be. What do you mean? They're selling bugs and using kids to make candy. <laughs> this one has <laughs> bugs. Yes. I don't think it has bugs in it. Well, uh, well, you haven't gotten to the center yet. I mean, it's goblin candy. It's always got bugs and in it. And if those kids made this candy, they have a real talent. <sighs> Look, let me get you something. Well, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm going to walk Go up like, well, and I'm going to take one of Zirko's teeth. One of Rico's teeth that I have, oh. and I'm gonna put it in the bowl. 
Okay, you do that, and it, the bull seems to accept it happily. And I'm looking for the equivalent of like a warhead. <gasps> okay. Um, you see. If you they see, have that, anything you like see spicy a, or you see sour. a small red candy. Mm. It is shaped like a little bomb. Oh, that's cool. And you you pick it up, and it feels warm in your hand. The coating around the outside is almost glittery, um, as if this thing had been held by the um, uh, had been held by the. Um, why, why can't I figure out what that word is called? Fuse. The fuse. Strip. Thank you. Mm. He, uh, held by the fuse and dipped into a oh, um, a glitter oh, a glitter wow. bag. Black rock candy. Um, and you um, you hold onto this, and you see that there's a small little um, tag on the side that says. Um, light the fuse for the most fun. All right, kid, look. Now, you didn't support it. I did. Here you go. Kremi, I said I have morals, all right? But not when candy's free. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Read the tag. Oh. What the fit? Oh. A little flame erupts That's onto the cool. fuse as it starts to uh, trick down. You open your mouth and uh, pop it in. You you immediately um, you immediately taste this delicious smoky <clears throat> flavor, <clears throat> and uh, interspersed with these bits <clears throat> of sweetness, mm -hmm. as all of a sudden <clears throat> you see smoke erupt out of Gideon's um, nose and ears and the sides of his mouth. Um, oh, no. Inside of your mouth, you he you feel the crackling explosion of essentially pop rocks <laughs> as this goes from sweet and smoky to fiery and hot. This is the spiciest candy you have ever tasted in your entire life. <laughs> is it good? Oh, I damn! I damn! I damn it. You. Oh man! We gotta take some. Uh, these goblin kids are onto something, all right? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go uh, throw a few more teeth and fingernails. Yeah, in there. I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a few for research later. Yeah, I mean, for research purposes. Thing. I mean, yeah. we gotta understand what we're doing. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, I have a bunch of trinkets. Well, the bowl and the cup, oh, I'm keeping. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll take this displace, varnish displace of beast. I don't think I'm giving that away yet, right? Okay, I'll throw it in the bowl. <laughs> That away. And Mikey really wants shark bites fruit snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But that's a blast. Whatever, Gricko. Mikey's really feeling that. Whatever, whatever. If they don't have that, they don't have shark bites, shark you, shaped assorted fruit fruit snacks. You look around and you begin to see that there's some semblance of um, of organization to this and you realize that certain things seem to be certain area in certain areas and you do find a small section um of of this stall where there is a court of coral themed candy section you see beautiful um coral lollipops that seem to be made out of crystallized sugar to form the shapes of uh, beautiful pieces of coral and varying colors mm. um but one of the things that catches your eye here is what looks to be a jelly fishbowl. It jiggles a little bit, and inside of it you see one shark swimming around oh, and around inside damn. of this thing. You reach in and you pick it That's up and cool. it, it jiggles in your hands. And as you're looking into it, you see that Whoa. there are um, all of the standard aquarium fare in here. You see a little treasure chest and um, you see fronds of, um, of seaweed mm. and uh, an ocean plant life all in their gelatinous candy form. But that one little shark, it seems to be a little more more dense than the rest as it swims around in this. You see bubbles billowing up from the bottom and as they pop, you can smell the sea salt. Um, and that's, that's, that's what Guys, you find. Guys, I know that child labor is bad and all, <laughs> but this candy's really cool. Damn, them kids makes me yeah. bad. Yeah. I mean, this Hell. Is a wise man once said, the only thing better than child labor candy is free candy. <laughs> oh, gosh. This is delicious. As you put it up to your mouth, the shark jumps out, <gasps> attaches to your nose, and bites. <laughs> it, it's like a pinch. It's, a gummy bite. It's, it's like it's a gummy bite. It's a pinch. 
Um, but you watch as this shark is attached to Gricko's nose and it's just wiggling this way and that. It looks like it's trying to be ferocious, but it's quite cute. Um, and you imagine you just have to pull it off and plop it into your mouth and eat it. <laughs> uh, biting into it, it is, um, it is a different sweetness than the other candy that you had. This is much more, um, this is much more subdued and there is a, um, just a bite of sea salt mm. with, with mm. every, um, with every chew. Uh, and you devour the gummy shark and its little gelatinous bowl and you uh, feel wow. candy-fied. This is delicious. I mean, we still gotta do the whole thing, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. We should take we should take some notes when we reopen a carnival. We could have yeah. a whole confection factory. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wanna go up to the bowl and take like all of the teeth and fingernails that I got from Gricko and Frost and just dump Jesus. them in the bowl and try to get like one of each and oh. just try to, you know, if it'll you, let me. You put a ton of things in this bowl um, and you imagine that it normally accepts one dumpage is one exchange, oh. but for the sake of, uh, it's the new year and good dumpage, karma. <laughs> Yeah, it's a dumb oh, bitch. Man. Oh, 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 <laughs> so much to do in January. No, I don't. No, it's January. Uh, oh, think think about the words you use, Dion. Remedies. Yeah, just, anyway. just one, one extra as as second. One <laughs> extra second will save uh, you a lot of headache. Wow. Yeah, um, it's, it's you right. pour your dumpage into the bowl, mm -hmm. uh, and it gets you a plethora of candy. Uh, you are able to pull about, uh, I would say, 30 pieces of candy. Yeah, all, basically as many different a, a kinds as I can pull. Yeah. A, a wide array. Array. Or variety. That's, yes. Yeah. Uh, don't Google Vore, I'm sure. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure that's a or nightmare. Dumpage. Or <laughs> dumpage. Uh, I'll put it all in my pack. Uh, and I want to see, so for, I want to take an extra of the unicorn push pops and an extra mm -hmm. of the bomb. And I want to check later at some point to see if it starts melting. But for now, mm -hmm. I'll have one of each. Okay. Uh, all right. So, I mean, wait. All we have to do is get an audience with Scabatha, right? I need you all roll a D8, please. Oh, hi, Mike. Can you roll two D8s? Back on track. Uh -oh. Double seven. Oh, I need to roll, roll Crummy roll? Die. Hold on. Hold uh, on. Yeah. Oh, I got God. a five. Oh. Got a three. Seven, two. Four. Okay, thank you. Arr. Um. Okay, if all we need to do is gain audience, then the kids are gonna handle the rest. Well, that's only like the first half. Then we have a pretty difficult choice to make. Wh uh, which is? Which is? Torbeck is no brainiac. Normally this would be Frost's territory, <laughs> but Torbeck doesn't see how we can possibly save those kids and steal a painting or three. You watch as Gricko's size doubles. Whoa! <laughs> he shoots up. Well, actually, no, he's just kind of like normal man height. He just becomes normal, yeah. He's yeah. like six feet tall now. <laughs> he goes from here to here. <laughs> I'm six four and I wrote for you, T.K. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at you, Gricko. Big man well, on campus. Oh, he's slightly less little green. Like normal green. Uh, yeah, come on, guy. Green. Now. Average height green. Yeah, well, ain't nothing to write home about. Green. <laughs> Simultaneously, as you say this, you're you're looking down at uh, at Gricko Torbeck as you are reduced in size by half. Uh, you slowly uh, start to shrink and shrink and shrink whoa, as your your eyes oh no. meet, the and then heck? you're looking up at Gricko instead of looking down at him. I should have known. This is a funny day. <laughs> whoa! Torbeck isn't doing this to himself. Torbeck is like mini Torbeck. Well, is this what it always looks like for Gricko? Yeah. How does it feel? I can't. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh, how does it 
I, I, see you, I, 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 I like get up. Oh I god, what's gonna out. happen to me? What's gonna happen to me? I look at you and I say, oh. but I really wasn't too bad until you kicked Tor. Torbeck, what was that for? Yeah, look how tiny you are. I will attempt to pick up Torbeck and just throw him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like trying to get away. No. I just like ah! so I like, sail through the goblin like market. Ah! You hit a couple of stumps. Um, you hit a small oh, ring of mushrooms and you completely obliterate them. Uh, you land up against the stall and the stall shakes. A couple pieces of candy fall, but magically reappear back where they were supposed to be. Two of the goblins look over and stare at you and shake their head, but they don't attempt to get involved. Uh, and as this is happening, Gideon, you reach out uh, and grab Crummy's shoulder. Um, once again, oh, looking at okay. these Thank idiots um, as you oh, watch them engage idiots. in whatever they're doing. You look down at his uh. hand um, and you see that where his hand is, there are now questionable stains. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you touch leaves questionable stains. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, look, 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 look at these two well, guys. Oh, they're so wagged. Yeah, what, what, what the fuck? What, man? You trying to stain my suit? No, I'm not trying to stain your suit. We got all your hands. Well, I mean, maybe it's covered in candy. I don't know. I've never seen anything like this happen before. Oh I swear. God. Let's get it out. Does it, does <laughs> Is it, it come coming out? out? Is it coming out? No. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? What, man? That's clearly cinnamon. When am I going to get a suit this nice in the Feywild? What, it definitely listen, doesn't look like cinnamon. There's no way what, it has what, ruined. It's clearly what, cinnamon. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> what, what color is it? Um, it doesn't necessarily have a color. It's just kind of darkened your... Um, your suit, it's kind of uh, splotchy. Crusty. Crusty. Yeah. It smells there's, a little there's, like there's Pennsylvania. A little, there's a little hardness. <laughs> it smells like Pennsylvania in the spring. Uh, there's a bit of hardness to it. You That's imagine if you like, tried to move it, you might crack oh. your, your coat. Uh, look, crack yeah. let me see. No, 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 we're talking about it. Let me see it. Let me see it. You are, you begin to panic. Yeah. And you all watch as Kremi's head begins to grow in size, as Kremi's head doubles in size. The no, rest no. of his body stays the same. <laughs> Whoa, man, look at that. Oh, it's gigantic. Let me help oh you out. Wait, here, here, let me oh. fix your head. You watch his stains appear oh. all over Kremi's hat and his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> From about 15 feet away, as Torbeck is getting on, brushing himself off, he, he looks at Gideon and goes, yeah, Torbeck is a hundred percent sure that that's not cinnamon. <laughs> oh my god, uh, you guys got a bunch of cool stuff. <laughs> cool? We got through me and threw Torbeck across the market. Oh gosh, is this how it feels all the time, guys? <laughs> it's hard to understand what oh. Rico says in this moment as he begins foaming at the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my dating app is blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> I got messages from girls from Goldman High School. I'm in the kitchen now. This is... This isn't good, guys. The height's going directly to Greg O's head. He's becoming a monster. <laughs> um, oh, this is how I was uh, meant to live. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is probably going to wear off eventually, right? Oh, okay, God. Oh, God. Oh, 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 no. Here, man. Right. Straighten up. Straighten up, all right? Ugh. Oh, oh my God. This is not pleasant. What oh. is going on? Hey, let me see that thing. What are you looking at? Here, give it here. Give it here. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like trees in Pennsylvania. That's disgusting. Why are you smelling it? It's pungent. Well, this is ruined. I'll go throw it in the trinket bucket. That's your hand. (laughs) Who has a cleaver? Uh, did my hat grow in size at all, or is it just my head? Oh no, your hat grew in size too. 
You look uh, like a bobblehead. <laughs> you look like the 007 giant head kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I hope this shrinks back down. Otherwise, my hat's ruined too. Well, these things. I mean, all... it's already looks pretty ruined. Gideon touched it when he was trying to write your head, and you see these uh, stains all over your hat. Listen, man, the hat looks out. perfect. All right, just don't don't take your mirror out. All right, just don't take your mirror out. Yeah. Okay, right. all I know is why. <laughs> I take my jacket off, so I stop smelling it. <laughs> I like wrap it up, uh, and I put it in my bag. Uh, all right, <clears throat> Gideon, stay at least five feet away from me. All right. All right, man. I don't need any more any more stains. I'm, I gotta say, guys, I don't think they're letting us in to see Scab with uh, uh, what we got going on. Well, that also raises the other issue with our plan. <laughs> We're on a time crunch, and there's someone ahead of us. We either come up with something more important than one other meaningless thing they have, or we have to deal with them. What if we just ask this guy to use the bathroom or something? He lets us in. I'm oh, like, hey, where's Kevin's in the bathroom? All four of us at the same time. What's he going to think, Gideon? How's he going to stop us? Uh, that was exactly my oh god oh fuck oh fuck god and I'm like trying to walk with it as my head starts to go and I oh, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay down here guys until this wears off uh, imagine being uh, misproportioned uh, 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 so anyway uh, I'm gonna go see if there's any lady goblins all of my jokes are suddenly funny <laughs> Uh, we've completely lost him. This oh, is awful. Oh my god. <laughs> Grico is a monster now. <laughs> Grico is a No one told Torbeck that Torbeck could act like this when he was that tall. In fact, Torbeck is taller than Grico, even bigger than normal Grico. Uh, I don't think it has the same effect, Torbeck. I'm sorry to say. Okay. Maybe if you hit the gym and like got a haircut, <laughs> uh, you know, you can try that. <clears throat> Noted. Look, I I think that's a good point. We don't have to fucking kill the guy, but we can say, hey, what if the person that uh, is in front of us happens to disappear? You know what I mean? Can we take a slot? Yeah, that's what Torbeck was. Torbeck was not insinuating to kill anyone. I don't know. You're pretty grim when you said it. <laughs> you said, it. what if he just doesn't show up? Yeah. It's just Torbeck's face and voice. You know, Torbeck's just like, well, you know, what if we had to deal with that? That's just Torbeck. No, that's like, let's kill a guy. No. Yeah, just 100%. the other day, I was like, do you want pancakes or waffles? That's just Torbeck. No, wait, you, you work like tell that? us to kill those guys? <laughs> no, I was talking about breakfast. What the hell, man? <laughs> you know, like, what do you want fries with that? <laughs> that was it, too? There were like three dead mushroom people back there. <laughs> what? I thought you meant kill. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, no. Uh, look, you gotta be careful about your inflection. All well, right. This is embarrassing. It really is. Well, yeah. For you, not for me. I mean, I do this thing all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, maybe we'll just hang out until this all wears off, and then we'll go back and talk to uh, what's his name. Chuck. <laughs> you walk oh, up no. to Chuck? Oh, oh no. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is oh, 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 no. Oh, this no. Is no. Bad, bro. I'm telling you, I, I don't want to hear it. I'm going to be dead in a month anyway. It doesn't. Did you hear that? Oh, God. Is that that worm thing in the forest again? Oh, it's worse. Have you I been? Show my my rocky talkie with all the numbers I've got. <laughs> Um, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> uh, your cell phone. What I, what Dormac <laughs> thinks Grigo is trying to say is that he's currently a high value man. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> it's not gonna last long, so you know, throw them a bone. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, um, no. he uh, he turns his rocky talkie <sighs> around to you, and you see that it's a match. <laughs> you can still speak. You're just. Foamy I just see you filming the mouth, and I think crab talk. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I really thought of crab and Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like, yeah all I yeah, does yeah, is foam yeah, with the mouth. Yeah, all I thought was crab uh, talk. That's really funny. Oh, uh, all right. Um, well, unless anyone has any other ideas. Oh, I can talk. Yeah. I had to get all of that candy was stuck in the back of me throat. <laughs> oh God, I hope that was candy. Did you actually want something to do with me, or are you just coming to show that we matched? <laughs> that was probably a bug. <laughs> it most certainly was a bug. Uh, anyways, well, I'll be over here if you need me. Uh, all right, get help me up. All right, man, come on up. Oh, wait, hold on, I forgot, hold on. Oh, no, God. come on no, up, man. No, you can't go the size of my head. Right. <laughs> you can't go the size of my head. Straighten up, all right? Oh, oh, God, it's all greasy. Oh, did, did it work on my skin, too? It did, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, oh, your skin looks I Just fine. on your no. skin, it looks like a... It looks whitish in color. Oh. It feels like it's kind of crackly and crusty. It sort of feels like that's, I've oh. never seen anything like that before day in my life. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, all right, well let's get this it's over with. Oh here. gosh, where's Frosty? I need to shove him into a locker. What a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chuck. <clears throat> yeah. All right. <clears throat> He's the You've deal. all been having a good time, haven't you? Oh, is is there? Oh, my shirt too. Oh God, is there a a wait list of some kind for today's appointment? Oh no, I am sure there is an appointment today. As I said, Scabatha is not in residence currently. She is in Yon, <clears throat> and she should be arriving back tonight. Should all things proceed as planned, but mm. her sister can be quite a uh, hot ticket. And, uh, is that the word for it? I don't know. Shut up. I walk Shut up, up and They're touch not him. judging me about it, all right? I ground by both of his shoulders. <laughs> all uh, right, well, say, those stains aren't coming out. <laughs> well, Chuck, I mean, what time tonight, buddy? I mean, really, who knows? I can't get this stuff I out can, of my hands. You don't have to rub down my chest. Well, uh, I'm just trying okay. to sew on my all hands, right. You know what? Right? I'm going to be dead in 30 days anyway. Oh, three days? 30. Oh, three 30. Zero. This is so good. Look. Look, I, I, if you had important business, I could send her a message and let her know what it was, and she could choose to come back early. What about, uh, wait, can you give us one more minute? <laughs> All right, then. I'm never going to be able to clean this jumper. <clears throat> And he sits, he sits back down and he watches he tries to Fella. flake the crust Gosh. away. Why don't you just lie on your back or something, Fella. man? Just lie on your back. Talk straight up. Guys, <clears throat> <clears throat> guys. Uh. They often, not only did they offer me a job, they said they'd immediately promote me. <laughs> Who? <laughs> the goblins here at the market. Oh, my God. What do you mean promote you? They don't pay anybody. I know! That was so, so, so weird! This is amazing! Look, I don't think he looks that attractive. I mean, what the fuck's going on? Something I'm not seeing? I don't know. I don't think he looks attractive at all. He's maybe a little bit taller, but it's hard to tell. It's all downwards from here. After he gets my energy. Oh. Uh, look, if Scabbath is not even here, what, do we even need to have a meeting with him? Could we just go in and like, you know, take care of everything? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe we can. Maybe yeah. Gideon's bathroom plan's not a bad one. There's right. no reason not to uh not to just do what we're gonna do. It's gonna make it easier. I mean he says right. she's not showing up till tonight. I mean the place is empty. Well, except for the toy soldiers. <laughs> The child laborer, 
Spurs and possibly a stab with those henchmen. And, but yeah, other than that, all clear. Yeah, I'm basically empty. Well, let's tell him we gotta use the bathroom and it's an emergency. He's gotta let us in there. <laughs> that always works. Yeah, I'm sure they got FOSHA laws around here or something. <laughs> you know, they can't <laughs> deny I got the bathroom. After uh, everything in the treehouse, I think we're a little tapped out, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a ruse, Rick. Oh, you oh. know that. Oh. <clears throat> What if I just go up there and use my newfound powers to just, like, manipulate them? That's fine, as long as you don't kick Dormick in the chest again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, that was kind of funny, yeah. I'm funny, and I... My eyes will open and like, <laughs> bit light on me. Oh my god, I get it. <laughs> uh, just don't get too used to it, Greg. Oh, Torbeck knows these things never last. <laughs> I think this is permanent. I don't know what you're talking about. I'll even take the foaming at the mouth. I don't he care. spits foam all over me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm completely soaked. So is Torbeck. Nothing gold can stay, Goblin Boy. <laughs> uh, hey, Chuck. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool, man. You know, maybe we should hang out later. Like, you know, a couple of us were going to grab, like, drinks, like, maybe next week or something. You should totally come with. You know, I, I, I would, yeah, I would take you. Yeah, up. yeah, wouldn't yeah. that be kind of fun when you like that a lot? <laughs> yeah, I would take you up on that offer. Yeah, yeah, uh, maybe sometime. Anyway, right now, we really got to use the bathroom. Right? <laughs> But now we really gotta use around the bathroom. All it's an four em- all four of us. It's an emergency. <laughs> mm-hmm. Our tummies from the candy, which is very delicious, by the way. Mm. It is. They are in a an upheaval. If you know what I mean. So I'm saying, but you know, bro, we should totally hang out like later. But like, not right now, not soon, but like eventually, right later. Yeah, sure. Uh, right behind these uh, stalls over here, uh, you'll find the outhouses. Okay. Thanks, bro. See you around. <laughs> How does that help us? <laughs> Let's, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll do it. Oh. I go to the outhouses and I'll like, and I'll look over <laughs> like we did it. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him that's not good enough. Tell him we gotta get inside. Oh! Uh, yeah, so I can't use the bathroom in an outhouse. I'll get uh, anxiety. Uh, uh, on account of all the noises. Uh, so we really need a private space inside. You understand, bro. Tell him you deserve it. We deserve it. It's I mean, your birthright. It's my birthday, actually. <laughs> It's my birthday, dude. We're, we're gonna we're gonna go to Chili's later. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's my birthday, uh, and so you can come to my after party birthday. It's, kind of, it's more of a, a tight crew for the main event. You know what I mean? You know how it is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but totally later, bro. Um. I look expectantly. You, you see, he looks a little bit sad. Yeah. Unless I get this fixed, I, I won't make it to my next birthday, so. I understand the importance of wanting to be able to celebrate on your special day and making it. And no wonder you had so much candy. Uh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, look, you, you've got a lot of impending you doom, probably, fella. You, are, you really think you're gonna die? I know I'm gonna die. Why? What, what, what makes you think that? Because I was cursed with this candy apple head and the beast within that is feeding upon my cerebellum as we speak. I will not have brain left by the uh, time my next birthday rolls around. Do you need help with that? Yeah. What, what, right? if, what if we like... What if we took care of that for you, What if we you, just buddy? killed the, the, the beast eating your head if it actually exists? Uh, Maybe this guy's just honest, I don't know if you could. Is it removable? Torbeck has long fingers. Like, well, weirdly true. long. Once he gets him up your nose, I mean, he can go anywhere. Is there an entry hole, or is it just, like, in, like spawned in your head? I don't know how he got in there. He got in there one night while I was sleeping shortly after this all happened. Is there a, is your head, like, can we maybe... Real? Investigate? 
I'm just not kind of call, I mean, call it I would out. prefer if you don't, I will bleed candy sauce from my wounds Let, and it will be painful. How about this? Let me I take could a look. die early. And if we can help you out, get rid of the beast inside your head. Could you let us inside and use the bathrooms out next I to the parlor? I was going to do that regardless, but if you want to help me as well, okay. So. I will accept it. I would like to make it to my next my next birthday if it's possible. Could you also you, maybe? You, uh, I would invite you pencil if you wanted in. to come. Uh, yeah, nah, we, we're busy today. Uh, no, are we busy today? Yeah, no, we're fucking. Busy. We might maybe. Oh, yeah, uh, no, we gotta check. Oh, we gotta check out. Uh, no, we would love. We would love to come to yeah. your birthday. We would love to. Yeah, yeah. 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 super excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we'd yeah. love to. We'd love to. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, that one. You guys said the same thing about Torbeck's birthday and then didn't show up. Oh, that was a long time ago. That was, and that I don't was... even think that's true. Weren't we at that one? No, Torbeck yeah. heard these exact same things almost 10 years ago. <laughs> no, we were there, right? Uh, were we did we by the punch bowl and, and uh, uh, yeah. no, that was Rick's there birthday. was no oh, punch yeah. at Torbeck's birthday. There was no punch because huh? Torbeck couldn't afford punch. What would you have? Uh, I think he said nothing. Yeah. Oh, dirty uh, swamp water. Oh, I think he had like a bottle of wood alcohol and uh, dysentery. Uh, and maybe like 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 soap. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe no, like a, we, like we had something. Are you, are you something sure happened. it was dysentery and you did you just didn't have Taco Bell cater your birthday? <laughs> Dormack's not sure. No, Dormack's very <laughs> sure he had no money <laughs> yeah. and catering was not an option. <laughs> that much Dormack is sure. Anyway, we'll help you. Well, <laughs> no, I think your first birthday is part of the team. I think I went down to the grocery store and got one of those shitty cakes. No, 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 no I cake. remember Remember, we no. sent him. Uh, uh, we, we sent oh, him. Oh, oh that's right. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we said that we were busy. <laughs> yeah. really, you thought it was funny. <laughs> and we sent Torbeck so late that by the time Torbeck got there, they didn't have any cakes left. <laughs> oh, that's right. I mean, oh, that's right. It's the yeah. thought that counts, though, isn't yeah. it? I could have sworn we did a terrible birthday. Oh, that was Chuckles' birthday. Yeah, that <laughs> oh, was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Chuckles. That was also the day you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we killed him oh, on his birthday. Poor oh, <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Well, at least that's probably when you punched him, and then he lingered for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, in the grass. Yeah. yeah. No wonder that guy haunts me. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on his birthday, that was really insensitive. Yeah. You know? I didn't intend to. Yeah. 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 Anyways, uh, you know, just not what happened. Uh, anyway, bro. <laughs> uh, we'll. <laughs> The guest the light guest light 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 <laughs> Anyway, bro. Yeah, we absolutely will. Uh, do you need like someone to hypothetically turn into like a cartoonish termite and climb inside your head and fight to the death with the worm? Nah, I'd, I'd really. What I would like is to not have this candy apple head to begin with. Oh. Let me see if I can take care of that for you. Well, maybe we should start by asking how you got turned into that. Who did it? Uh, well, uh, I think we, we've already talked about this a little bit. And I'm not comfortable saying names. Um, I'm no I'm no snitch. I may be a bitch, but I ain't no snitch. So my mom <laughs> always said to me. Damn. Um, <laughs> Weird thing that is to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, but what that's I will rough. say is, I Old might, lady. I might have been cursed. I might have made a mistake. I might have tried to tried to pull okay. the wool over someone's eyes. I might have thought I was smarter uh, than I really am, and right. uh, I paid the price for it. How long ago this sick, all Sick, sick. All right, all right. <laughs> sick. It, it's been a while. I was a bro. It's oh, been a while. Why do you think you got 30 days left now? Like, well, because what's, that's, what's the... that's what this little guy's telling me. He's been counting down the oh, days since oh, the day God. that oh, he got God. into my head and started eating away at my cerebellum. Oh, that head. is one oh, hard sore fucker. Really <laughs> dark. This guy listens to death metal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, holy that's, shit. Oh, Cerebellum's that's a good band. That's rough, actually. bro. That's rough, bro. Wait, is he all, like, it was the numbers descended or is he oh, always yeah. saying 30? Every day I wake up and... He just said 29. Oh, well. 
Well, I, I mean, that's a good idea. What if Grick he could turn into a little termite and uh, eat his way into yeah. your head? Well, and that may fight be to possible, the death with but the, with a... I think he's part of my curse. Oh, okay. Another one we're replacing. There, there always has to be one. Uh, <laughs> of course. Well, what if well, Grick becomes the curse? I don't want to Davy Jones this, Gideon. Let's not. <laughs> let's not curse me. Would you like to have a candy no, apple? No, 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 no. What if he becomes Probably the curse? You, you give him one day with us uh, every year. No, 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 no. no. Dormek has a feeling no, that no. the person who will not be named is probably pretty powerful. Do you think you can overdo that? Uh, no, I just checked. I don't got anything to help him. Uh, well, I mean, I could try to kill the worm, but it sounds like that, that won't that help. That won't help. Uh, how do we break the codes? What have, what have you done wrong? I told you. I tried to pull the wool over someone's eyes. Whose eyes? We'll I, make it wrong. I told you. I can't tell you. Do you listen? Well, maybe this will end up being... I'm sorry. A... I'm sorry. I'm getting out of sorts. I, I just heard 29. Just That's scabified. one more day gone. That's what I... Hey, I, I, I did not say no, that. No, I did no. not say those words did not come out of my mouth. Nobody's accusing you of saying that. Tor I never Rick said that. just saying that maybe this will end up being I, a two penguins, one banana hammock situation. And we can <laughs> help him out. Yeah, of course. I cannot let you inside Loom Lurch if you have any nefarious designs on the hostess. No, 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 we're, no. we're going to go look for the bathroom. So no, anyway, bro, we'll chill at your birthday party. We're going to get we're going to get lit. It'll well, be if, sick, you can, if you can't, if you can do nothing to fix my head, there will be no birthday party this year. Oh, for well, Chuck. not until uh, I think level seven. Uh, well, Torbeck is confident we will try it out, but Torbeck yeah, is yeah. also Good confident time. that these three individuals will not be coming to your birthday party. <laughs> I don't Whoa, think there's going to be one not cool, about, bro. Right? No, no. But we'll do what we can to help out your curse situation. No, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be cool. We'll go to Smashville, rent an Airbnb, get cowboy hats. It'll be <laughs> sick, bro. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. <laughs> Is Smashville and Hither? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I ain't never been there. Yeah. I hear it's real pretty, though. Yeah. It's got a lot of swamps. I like sick, swamps. Sick. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Sick, 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 bro. Yeah, we'll do that. That's where we'll get cowboy hats. And well, it'll be really rad. They ain't, they ain't prepared for a friend group like ours. I've never seen a group like ours. I don't know if it's true that we will do those things. Oh, it really is. Uh, That's it. I will hope that I've got more than 29 days that you'll come through for old Chuck. And uh, I just got to say, <clears throat> y'all don't realize how lucky you are to have friends like you do. The way you reminisce about Torbeck's birthday and the <laughs> lovely time yeah. it was. <laughs> that cake you were trying to get and... <clears throat> those those silly old pranks. I ain't had friends like that in a long time. It gets lonely out here, you know. <clears throat> well, when you have twenty nine days left, you have a lot of time to think to yourself about what your life could have been, should have been, and why. Uh, and I just, yeah, I just want uh, you to know, you got something special. Yeah. Don't forget that. I mean, look at the two of you in love. Well, yeah. man, I mean, uh, you can just see. I mean, we love, yeah. I mean, and Rico and yeah. Torbeck. Yeah, 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 but you do have his special. Bro, we all love you each other, bro. Oh, yeah. You yeah. don't yeah. find all, a, all bros love each other. Yeah. Yeah. You don't find a romance like that often. What, yeah. Like a bromance? Like a bromance, yeah. yeah. Bromance. Bromance and all smash the, yeah. the way your eyes connect and sparkle <sighs> in the light. Well, I haven't looked at him one time since we've been talking to him. Yeah. Except last time I was holding his head. Those subtle. <laughs> Those subtle stolen glances when you collapse. think no one's looking. Uh, yeah, it's just what homies, homies do. That's what bros. Just, yeah, you know. and it's and it's beautiful. Uh, anyway, why uh, are you scowling at me, you tiny thing? Home <laughs> just brought up a lot of unhappy memories. Your door. <laughs> why do you say that, little one? <laughs> 
Torbeck doesn't like to complain. <laughs> Tor but then Torbeck got kicked in the chest. <laughs> you come up over here. And he, he pulls up a mushroom stool and pats oh, it. Sit God, down. Sit down. Please. And you tell I, me back. Torbeck really shouldn't elaborate. Oh, he's going to elaborate. Oh, here I, we sit go. Go. I sit down. I sit down. Oh, boy. Yeah, you know, it's just, you heard I didn't come to Torbeck's birthday. Now, I do the same to you. You know, sometimes when you love someone so much, you have to take space from them. And maybe they just couldn't be there that day because they were afraid of what it would do to you when well, they all had to leave and how sad it would make you. Look, you know, once or twice, like, <laughs> understandable, but 29 times? We don't say the word 29. <laughs> oh, that's... Torbeck, Torbeck, oh, Torbeck, no. It's all right. It was this a mistake. Is, it was a mistake, buddy. You know, this is getting awkward. Tor we should go, guys. We should go. Well, it's clear that you all love each other and that they love you, too. Yeah. Not as much as they love each other, but Cra they do still love you <laughs> at least Mr. a little bit. Mr. Grammy calls me a goer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I call you an employee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's worse. I, it hurts worse. It hurts worse. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got another birthday coming around this uh, year. Oh, yeah, man. maybe. Anyway, maybe. sucks, bro. Can you take it to the bathrooms, please? <laughs> No, no, he doesn't have to come with us. We're just gonna go for fun and our own and loon lunch. Yeah, we're we're gonna just wander on up. Well, and yep, yep, yep. Can't open the door without me. So. Oh, yeah, well, you gotta let us in. You gotta let us in. You need to like watch us go to the bathroom. I mean, that'd be like weird. Now, <laughs> yeah, jeez. I don't think anyone said they wanted to watch me. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I was just checking. You know, I was just, just checking. Are you asking? No, 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 no. Just saying. We Why are just, you smiling? We just need. I'm just. It's all the foam in my. It looks like it's. Smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crusting all in my. It's all starting to crust now, so it looks like all a right. smile, but it's not. Well, I mean, it's no. the involuntary muscle response. How much candy do you all have? Uh, what? How much candy did you all have? Torbeck uh, just ate one lollipop. All right. Well, you're about halfway through. Oh god. Mm. Well, I have one. Yeah, I have one too. Uh. It's about roughly an hour per piece. Oh, well. Uh, I had two pieces, the sharks and the whatever. Oh, the sharks are good. And the pops. Yeah. That was two. Oh, that's why I have two effects. Ah, I get it. I get it. Anyways, we should. Uh, yeah, all right. We'll follow bathroom me. Bathroom and all. We'll, you know, we'll don't go get too get graphic, you. but. We'll <clears throat> go get you into the parlor. And this candy is so good, I'll give it a canned A. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly what he was saying. <laughs> uh, that was very good. That was the Derek is a good one. We try. We try. That was actually very Derek esque. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, 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 it's not a candy at all. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, okay. Well, he thanks. jumps off of his uh, off of his stump and begins to make his way along the same path that you came in um, over. And you um, you walk out of the Goblin Market over the root bridge that spans across the winding river at the front of Loom Lurch, and then around a um, a small curve to another root bridge that leads directly to um, the tail end of this gigantic. Um, fallen oak tree. This is the portion that had been uh, rooted into the ground and you can see the petrified roots um, that snake down from the entrance and bury deep into the earth here, um, almost creating um, like an arched entryway to this thing. And on the very uh, base of it, you see a large arched wooden doorway. Uh, you watch as Chuck pulls out a uh, huge iron key ring and begins flipping through them until he gets to one that's shaped, um, that's, that's very long and the base of it is shaped like a rocking horse. Uh, he sticks it into the, the lock 
uh, twists it and takes the large iron handle and heaves it over and pulls the door open. You're immediately hit with uh, the sense of uh, cinnamon and baked goods. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. The smells Mm -hmm. of sweets and candies that are clearly being made further into this place. Um, And you see in very dim uh, candlelit light, what appears to be a small entryway, a small parlor. Um, he holds the door open for you. Uh, you can take a seat in here. Uh, I will alert Pincushion that you are here and that you have my permission to uh, venture deeper into Loom Lurch uh, to the restrooms. She will be your guide. Uh, and uh, it was nice meeting the four of you. It's been uh, a pleasure, bro. If I don't, Seriously. If I don't see you again, I wish you all the best. Uh, and you are second in line to meet with Skevitha, so I will let Pingushin know that, and she'll tell you what to do from there. Good luck with that thing. Yeah. Thanks. If you think of any cures or anything, you know where to find it. Uh-huh. Termite death fight was all I had, so <laughs> that's all I got. Sorry, bro. Yeah. <clears throat> so, kill the worm was the extent of it. All right. Well, have a good night. And he, um, he bows to you and waits for you to make your way into Loom Lurch as he closes the door behind you and makes his way back towards the Goblin Market. This chamber is nestled between walls of twisted roots, through gaps in which you can see the eerily beautiful woodland surrounding you. A closed wooden door stands opposite the root bridge that leads into this room, in the center of which are four armchairs encircling a small table laid out for a tea service. A painted wooden box three feet on each side rests in a corner. A crank protrudes from one side of it, causing it to resemble an oversized jack-in-the-box. You look around, expecting to see someone else. You'd been told that there was someone in here waiting to meet Scabatha. You appear to be alone in this room. There is a fresh tea service sitting on this small table. There are four cups that are um, filled with steaming hot liquid. There is a towering tray filled with uh, delicacies of all kinds. Um, It's very clear that this is where that pastry baked good scent had come from. Uh, There are... There's a small hearth in the corner that's uh, helping to illuminate the room and uh, keep its warmth uh, radiating in here. And there are uh, all kinds of uh, different paintings and shadow boxes and other things lining the walls. But unlike Bavlorna or um, unlike Bavlorna's home, these are all of different knitted pieces and um, sewn pieces. You see uh, bits of quilts. You see a shadow box filled with uh, a varying array of buttons. You see um, you see a small doll sitting on a shelf. Uh, hello? Anybody here? What to do? Huh. Doesn't look like anybody's around. Didn't he say he was going to go get pincushion or something? No, that we were after pincushion, but that pincushion was going to be here waiting. No, oh. he said that he was going to call pincushion and she oh. would come and escort you through Loom Lurch. Oh, should we like zip away? Mm, that might raise suspicion. Wait, but someone was supposed to be waiting here, right? Well, they're gonna, well maybe, but who knows if that person <laughs> was going to sit here until Scabatha came back. <laughs> We're just waiting for pincushion so they know we have permission to use the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, all okay. he said was uh, was we were second in line, but she wouldn't come back till tonight anyway. So, I mean, that means might not. hear the sound of pattering from behind this door that goes further into Loom Lurch. It's this very soft tap, tap, tap sound. Oh. What's that? Hey, that's Pincus? I guess so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna really just focus. Where's that coming from? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to feel where it's coming from. The other side of the door. Other side of the door, like we knew already. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for confirming, though. Hold on. Okay. Let's tap back. Maybe. All right. Tap, tap, tap. 
this tea for us. You hear the you hear the pattering stop for a second. And then you hear hmm. Say you are looking for the bathroom. The uh, our buddy here really needs to use the bathroom. <laughs> Don't tell him the doorman has to go. That's embarrassing. He really has to use bathroom. Doorman thought we were in this together. Big, big Brown has to use bathroom. <laughs> why, why are you talking like me suddenly through the door? <laughs> I'm, oh, well, shut's head. Uh, my name's Gideon Cole. Hey, wait a second. That's my name. And if anything bad happens for talking to you, that's it. You should be punished. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Exactly like him. That's pretty good. He's <laughs> telling him the Torbeck has to use the bathroom. I'm about to talk about he has to use the bathroom. Oh, say he's a small bladder. He's a small bladder. He's he's a little fella. I mean, he's a little he's a little brown now. <laughs> he's a little brown. Look how tall he is. You hear the pattering start again. He's a little brown. He's got to make a big brown. Say yeah. that. Hey, don't say that. Say that. Say that. Say that. Little brown's got to make a big brown. You know? no, <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> You hear the pattering start again, or actually through all the noise you're making, you probably don't. Uh, but eventually you hear the creaking sound of the door opening and you all look out expecting to see someone standing there. And you see literally nothing, or you see no person standing there. What you do uh. see is flickering lanterns that illuminate a cluttered workshop filled with soft ambient music produced by bells and chimes. Parts of toys are heaped on the tables, leering dolls' heads, half-built rocking horses, unpainted wooden balls, and the stuffed limbs of soft toys. A stove at the back of the room holds a saucepan of smelting metal. Three doors exit the workshop, and two storefront windows overlook the market outside. Three young children are gathered around a wooden work table. The eldest, a drow boy, prances on the tabletop with a bar of soap in one hand, while a halfling girl and a human girl giggle at his audacity. Oh. And you watch as this plays out. And then you hear, Excuse me, I'm down here. Pay attention to me. Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Hello? And you Not look down and you see about one foot tall, a small rag doll. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. has pins sticking out mm -hmm. of different parts of her body. Mm -hmm. um, and she is wearing a dress that is clearly quilted together. Uh, her hair is made of yarn and her eyes are buttons. And she looks up at all of you as she waves her as she waves her arms at you. Well, if you have to use the bathroom, I'm more than happy to take you, but we must make haste. Okay. All right. Don't touch anything and you don't stop until we get there. All right, thank you for, mm -hmm. for, for leading the way. Oh, I'm pincushion, by the way. And she curtsies <coughs> in front of you. Oh. Nice to meet you. Dor yeah, nice to meet you. Dorbag is usually <laughs> twice as tall as this. She reaches out and grabs your hand and you um, you shake it. Her hand feels very light and as you as you hold on to it, it squishes. You can tell that it's clearly filled with some sort of fluff or fabric mm. scraps. Oh, that's so um, you see that her um, her jointing is done with these small pins mm. um, so that her arm and her wrists can move individually. Her fingers all seem to be jointed in some way. Um, and as you shake her arm, it, it flops a little bit and she giggles. Mm. Um, You've quite the strong grip. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry about all the stains, by the way. Oh, no! I'm really going to get these oh, out! Well, I just got to get to the bathroom. Stop no, touching stuff. Oh. Well, I don't know, oh, man. It's just polite. I thought it was polite. We're yeah, meeting somebody new. Gosh. I shook her hand. This guy's always talking about the bathroom and, like, browns and stuff. He's, <laughs> no. a, he's a freak. Stop. Sorry about it. Sorry about this guy. Oh, you are this, the, this guy's a freak. You're the tallest hey. goblin I've ever seen, and hey, I'm yeah, going thanks. to need new hands. He's a bully, and he's not the tallest goblin you've ever seen. <laughs> oh, my yeah, gosh. I've never seen set. a cataplepis in Little the flesh fly. before. Oh, what? A cataplepis. What did you call Dorbeck? Well, depending on where you're from, a Catoblopos. Oh. Uh, wow. We really gotta use the bathroom. Uh, thank you, Pincushion, oh, for you're leading welcome. the way. And hopefully the name's just a euphemism and not literal. Well, she looks down, she pulls a pin out of her chest. Oh. I'm a Pincushion, you see? 
And that doesn't hurt? Oh, no, not at all. I'm filled with stuffing. And she pokes herself. Uh, oh. No, I promise mm. it doesn't hurt at all. Oh, oh, I'm yeah, made of yes. fluff and fabric stuff. And she puts the pin back. You all have a lot in life. Yes. Anyway, lead the way, please. Thank you. Okay, all right. We're going yeah. to head deeper in. Um, It's just around the bend. All right. And you walk forward through the workshop. Do you... the kids look familiar? Do they look like the three that were taken? That uh, the described by the getaway gang? Uh, mm. One of them does. Oh. The little boy does. I'll make a note of that in my brain. Uh, and as, as you walk by the workshop, you hear her go, excuse me, you three have work to do. <laughs> Don't make me tell Granny Nightshade you've been fooling around. And you hear um, the the little boy uh, turns and looks towards her. <sighs> We've been working so hard, though. I know you have, but Granny Nightshade will be back in a few hours, and you don't want to find, you don't want her to find you slacking. Oh, just tell her we've worked really hard today. Don't tell her about this okay pin cushion. Hmm. All right, but only if you leave me some buttons by the door. You know we will. Okay, then, little scamps. Come on. And she scurries towards the door. This is morally dubious. Oh, my um, God. Don't tell anyone that you saw that, all right? I can't help but have a soft spot for the children. They always put me back on the shelf when I fall off. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, through this door. Oh. <laughs> you... Don't mind the, uh... Don't mind the, the bubbles. You make your way through this workshop. It is a long workshop. It takes up probably about a, an entire quarter of the the fallen length of Loom Lurch. Wow. Um, this is clearly the largest section of this place, you would imagine. Uh, as you make your, your way into a circular room, um, walking in, it's incredibly dark at first, but as your eyes adjust, you see ten brightly painted structures resembling little wooden houses lining the walls of this room. Each small house has a three-foot-high hinged door. Four of the doors are open, and the other six are closed. A narrow staircase ascends the circular wall. Near the foot of the stairs is a painted wooden box, three feet on each side. A crank protrudes from one side of it, causing it to resemble an oversized jack-in-the-box. Huh. As you begin to walk through this room, you hear a gasp come from Pincushion. She looks around and pushes you into spots between these um, these little houses, uh, pushing each one of you. Shh, be silent. The beat of a drum erupts from out of nowhere, uh, from out of the woodwork as all six small doors spring open at once. A troop of cask-shaped tin soldiers marches into view. A drum waddles behind one of them on stocky legs, striking itself with a pair of tiny drumstick arms. Mm -hmm. As it beats the drums, you watch as all six of them um, are called to arms. They march towards the center of the room. They all look. They all move around, but their heads stay looking in one place as they turn towards the door you just left from and march out in a single file line. Pin, pin cushion waits until silence um, has befallen in this room. Oh, I completely forgot it was time for the changing of the gods. If they had seen you, oh, you're not supposed to be in here. Oh, well, I thought we were given permission. Well, you were given permis permission in a way, but if Granny Nightshade knew that there was anyone she, she did not know and did not allow to wander around inside this place, we would all be in so much trouble, and you the most so. The guards only listen to her, not to me and not to Chuck. Oh, mm. All right, so we'll keep an eye out. Well, thank you for that. Well, now that the guards are changed, are we are we in the clear? Yes, for the time being, but you must be careful. Their All music right. is incredibly powerful. They can stop you in your tracks, paralyze you, charm you, deafen you, frighten you, petrify you, even poison you with their music. Wow. Wow. That's like a, impressive. But they are quite cute. Like a random D8 kind of thing? Or is it going to you? They're so cute, I'm going to show you what they look like. Oh! oh, oh very cute. Little, little thing. 
their little, yeah. little oh, they little, they're little yeah. chubby like toy soldiers. Pants. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> well, uh, <laughs> I don't really gotta use the bathroom. No, yes, yes, yes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. Where do we go to next? Um, we are going to go yes into the next room. Uh, and she opens the door on the opposite side, and you see that there is a small hallway um, that clearly leads to some sort of pantry. You imagine you're getting closer to where the candy is being made. And off to the side, there's a small door, and uh, she opens the door, and inside you see what is uh, clearly a very small restroom. All right. Oh. Well, we're here. Well, thanks. We'll see you around. Yes, I'll wait right here. Oh. No. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a one person ordeal. We, so. we could really use some privacy. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm not going in there with you. I'm just going to stay outside. Uh, no, with I those just mean. Who are... Even in his shot, I would just. You can go on. We, and we once gonna... he gets started, you don't want to be in the vicinity. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. Might, it might, might be a while. I uh, yeah, had a big bowl um, of stroking off her ass. So. <laughs> that may be the case. But gonna... Unfortunately, I, I can't leave you alone inside of Loom Lurch. Oh. Uh, uh. All right, Torbeck, go I on. I promise I won't judge. You have to go the worst, I think. Tor Torbeck has to go first? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? Dude, you little, 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 little fella goes first, what they say. What if Torbeck is too shy? It's like an audience, the crowd watching. Torbeck knows you're all outside the door. We'll plug our ears, don't worry. You not gonna. <laughs> then you're gonna make fun of Torbeck later. And that's not what we would ever do. It's yeah, just a risk we're gonna know. have to take. We wouldn't yeah. need this moment to do that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Torbeck, Torbeck hopes that while Torbeck is in there, the rest of Torbeck's friends think about things. <laughs> and he eyes them up very severely as he moves, he steps backwards into the, the, the restroom and he shuts the door, maintaining eye contact with all three of his friends. <laughs> Oh, he's a fussy little and he guy. Shuts the door. And he, he's a fussy little guy. You like, find you know. yourself inside of this small little, um, the small little bathroom. Uh, there is a uh, there is a lamp on the wall that is filled with fireflies. That the moment you shut the door, um, they begin to buzz and illuminate and fill the room with a soft light. And you are <laughs> there to do whatever you choose to do. Uh, Torbeck is going to sit on the toilet. And just sit there and try to uh, like buy time and think about how long he can sit there in this bathroom reasonably before it's like absolutely ridiculous. But to try to give the rest of the guys time to like think of something or do something, you know, just to buy as much time as possible. Yep, that. You're free to do that. Pin pin cushion. After seeing you go in, uh, you, I mean, you can't see this, but she flops down onto the ground. Um, her soft uh, fabric legs spread out in front of her as she picks up the hem of her dress and one of the needles. You see as she threads it with a piece of yarn from her hair, um, and she begins to sew on a new patch to her dress as she um, as she giggles and sings to herself. Um, she is there with you, but she's not. She's not watching you hyper closely. You imagine if you tried to rush off and go somewhere else, she would notice, but she's not, she's trying to give you privacy. Last thing I'll say is two, within two minutes of me entering the bathroom, from the bathroom, you'll start to very softly hear, <laughs> Torbeck is very He's <laughs> very clearly like humming to himself while he's on the toilet. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, pin uh, 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 cushion. I, I appreciate you. I, my, my neck's rough, so I'm gonna lay on my back. Just, we're gonna be here a while, so I get down on the ground. So I'll, I'll lay quite, on my back. Your head is quite large in comparison to your body. Right? Yeah, it's not always this way, but uh, oh, I think I got another twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah. If you got some way to help, uh, I don't, sadly. Oh, right. But time will help, and if you ate candy. Right as you showed up at the Goblin Market, you have maybe 10 more minutes left. All right, well, he'll be a lot longer than 10 minutes, so. Oh, know. yeah. I'm just gonna sure. lay down. Oh, <clears throat> and the heart thing will stay, right? <laughs> That's gonna be staying. 
I'm, I'm sorry, what? You know, me being so ruggishly tall. Well, you're the My tallest. My in, inside energy finally being presented on the outside. You, know? you are tall in comparison to a goblin, yes? Oh, yeah, obviously. I'm like 6'4". <laughs> yes, and you row for UC I Davis. I for UC Davis, actually. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at your shirt. Your yeah, shirt. Uh, you couldn't help Marlon, I understand. <laughs> oh, no, you're not really my type. Yeah, no, I'm, I wasn't. I was just being nice. <laughs> Can you believe this? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Pink Ocean, you're taking a lot of risks just to wait for us to go to the bathroom. I mean, what I, happens if you get caught? Oh, I'll be deconstructed. Oh, my oh God. God. Listen, that's, look, I, we we remember how you brought us in here. Why don't you go on and get back on your shelf wherever you're supposed to be? And we can, we can find our way out of this place once we're done. Well, if I'm deconstructed, I can be put back together. But if I let you wander around this place and something were to happen and Granny Nightshade were to find out, it'd be far worse than deconstructed. Oh. I would be uh. turned into mulch and used as stuffing and other toys, uh. never to be put back together again. Well, no, it's uh. all good. I mean, Granny Nightshade knows we're here. We're second in line to meet her. Yeah, nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to get punished by the cruel working conditions of this place. They need to be able to like find you, right, and and like grab you to deconstruct you, right? There's not some yes, sort of, of like remote magic where they can just wave no. their hands and wherever you are get horribly mutilated. No, not that I know of. Granny Nightshade's very powerful, so it's possible for sure. Probably not. All right. But maybe. Well. Yes. Well. Could I ask you to do one little favor for me? You could ask, and I'll do my best. Uh, would you would you kindly not make a peep and lay lifeless as if you were a real regular doll? Are you really trying to charm me right now? <laughs> no, no, not not at all. Make it with some saving throw. <laughs> she could be charmed. Oh, that's not going to work on me. Uh, no, I don't know what you mean. I, I just if you could just give us some some silence as Torbeck goes to the bathroom. <laughs> appreciate that. That was not nice. Look, I'm trying to make sure that uh, you don't get hurt is all, and I figured if we just scoop you up and put put you, put you in our pocket, you're not under any risk, and you'll stay nice and safe. And don't you think you could have told me that instead of trying to lie to me and force me to do your will? Uh, I could have. <laughs> <laughs> not really my style, though. Yeah, where's the fun in that? <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, here's the thing. I'll level with you. We just really need some privacy, and uh, I don't think once it's my turn, I don't think I'm gonna be able to go unless uh, you're either gone or hidden away in a little pocket. So here is the thing. I cared for a while. Now, I don't care so much whether you're comfortable or not. Oh, that's fair. You know, I, 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 wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't knock you on that at all. We're just random strangers. Uh, uh, Gideon, <laughs> what do you think? It's time for pancakes and waffles. <laughs> you should have grabbed the tea candies. The tea, the tea candies. What do you mean the tea candies? There are tea candies out there at the Goblin Market. Take it. Take the tea candies. Yeah. Take them where? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm cool. I wrote for UC Davis. <laughs> it is about this time that your head shrinks. Oh, your God. height returns. Yeah! You, feel, you feel your body pressing against the walls of this bathroom, which is significantly too small for you now. Um, as Gricko, you shrink down. Your mouth's still frothing, but you lose all of your height. Now you're a tiny frothing goblin. From, from inside the bathroom, you just hear... Yes! <laughs> <laughs> then the door. <laughs> Torbeck takes one step out, takes two steps out, stands up to his full over seven foot height and leans over Gricko. <laughs> Torbeck told you this wouldn't <laughs> last forever! 
<laughs> Tore back your pants. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gideon. Oh, man, just desserts. <laughs> but the point stands, Greco. Torbeck's not gonna take revenge now. Torbeck might not even take revenge tomorrow. But at some point, Torbeck's gonna get you back. Also, the bathroom is free. Okay, I'll be right back. Sorry, I was holding it in. I feel like something has left me. <laughs> now, feel, now you're free too, and you I you're feel, on debate club for Rockway Community College. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be depressing. Yeah. Oh wait, but but Goblin Tiffany said she wanted to. Oh, sh they all unmatched. <laughs> <laughs> Goblin Cheryl, she said, oh, her grandmother died. <laughs> if, if you'll excuse me, I'll be right back. And I'll go into the bathroom and in the silence of here. Uh, I sit there and I cry in the bathroom. <laughs> so, how's everybody doing? We're just waiting. Yeah. We're just waiting. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for Grigo to be done. And then the yeah. begin's turn. And, Are uh, there other exciting things going on in Loom World? Oh, well, while you were in the bathroom, your friend tried to compel me to do your bidding. Uh, you have no evidence of that. What? Yeah, no, I didn't. No, I Which didn't. I definitely friend? didn't do that. Friend? Well, the crocodile. Whoa, no. excuse me. Oh. Cranny. I don't look anything like a crocodile, I'll have you know. I'm an alligator. Ew. Uh, <laughs> also, that's... I'm about having, uh, having enough of this, gear. Totally <laughs> doesn't sound like Cranny at all. He uh, would never do that. Are you lying to me? No. Oh, Dr. would never. <laughs> I just don't understand why this keeps happening. Well, why one keeps happening? Why people always try to lie and sneak and cheat. Even someone very close to this place does the same. Okay, Dormac will come clean. It was in Krammy's nature. <laughs> but he can't help himself, truly. Why it's... not? Is he under a curse that he must always lie and sneak and cheat? Well, From a certain point of view, <laughs> kinda, yeah. He quite literally can't help himself. And Torbeck just kind of gets swept up in it, and it's like this moving current, and Torbeck is sorry. Torbeck shouldn't have tried to lie. Well, I appreciate your apology. That's very nice. Can a, can a man magically charm someone for eight hours with his privacy going into the bathroom? <laughs> Is that too much to ask? Let's not pretend it didn't seem like too much to ask. you want to be in this place to use the bathroom. Well, how it's do you very, know? Because you tried to convince me to leave you alone here. Well, I tried the to convince you means. to flop down like a regular old pincushion doll. That's all I said. I didn't say I was going to leave here. Yeah. Unless you know something I don't. If you had no reason to be deceitful, you would not try to be deceitful. Oh, that's not true. Yeah. We never had any reason. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of times. If that's the case, then I yeah. don't know how I possibly work with the, with the four of you. Well, <clears throat> have you ever just tried being kind to someone? Dormac does. Have you ever tried telling the truth and just asking for what you need? Dormac does. Everybody knows kind guys finish last. That's <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I haven't tried it. No, no, no that sounds like for lamos. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to be very angry right now. But I'm a doll, and I don't have emotions that last. Because oh. I don't have a heart or anything. Oh. So they're fleeting. Right now, I'm simply confused. What do you want here? What do you... What are you trying to gain here? And you know who you are throwing in the line of fire for whatever it is. Chuck let you in here. And if whatever you're trying to do goes awry, I know he only has 30 days left to live. 29. Oh, no, another day ticked down? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, if he's in the line of fire, it seems like, I mean, I don't know that we need to be worried about yeah, that. Yeah, dead man so, walking. Yeah, man, yeah. that's like easy, you know? Yeah. I just hope that his final 29 days are worth living for and that they're not ruined or cut short by whatever you're trying to do. And I myself may be just a doll, but I'm still me. I still have a life. And if I'm not here to protect these children, who's going to be? <clears throat> okay. Honest truth. Hmm. We heard that Scamatha wasn't going to be back until tonight. That's true. And for walk-in appointments, there was someone before us. We thought by using the bathroom, we could scope out the situation and deal with them. <laughs> you wanted to kill the poor old lady that was here trying to resurrect her husband? What? No! <laughs> we were going to see it, maybe we could ask to go first! <laughs> so why did you say it in such a malevolent way? That's well, what I'm saying! That's what I'm saying! Yeah, we're on the same page! Yeah, I look, is I there, told you! Is there a reason you put your hand at your waist and started to rub your thumb against your blade? <laughs> Uh, there is so much of what you just said that doesn't make any sense to Torbeck. And then you did the... <laughs> <laughs> Torbeck doesn't remember any of that. And then you did this. And with this. This is just Torbeck's face. You <laughs> drew a skull and crossbones in the ground. The point is that that's the truth. <sighs> oh. Well. She's... She was put where Scabatha wanted her to be put for the time being. So there's no one currently in line to see her. Oh right my now. god, six feet under? In a, from a certain point of view. <laughs> oh my god! What? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, uh. Why do you want to see Granny Nightshade? I, I understand. Why the lady wanted to see her? What happened to her was horrible, and and the, the the pain of a lost love can drive someone to do maddening things. And I do understand why someone would come and beseech Granny Nightshade for her magics, but it never works out in the end. What could you possibly be desperate enough to need? Oh, Mister Crummy has information. He's good like that. Secrets and whatnot. I want to make a deal. With, with Granny Nightshade. Yeah. I mean, she's a powerful hag that ru rules over this land, and I'm a businessman. And I got some uh, you know, something she may want. Mm, what she, is it? It's information. About what? Uh, if I told you, then you'd have it. <gasps> yes, that's true. But the only way you'll get into Granny Nightshade is through me. <laughs> 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 it's uh, it's about a sister's. Oh, unless you have the head of her sister, I don't think she's going to care all that much. Well, that's the thing. If we have a way to take care of them, perhaps we could offer our services about that. Yes, perhaps. And so, if we have an in with uh, one of her other sisters, we can head on over to Heather and uh, do a job. I think she'd be uh, mighty amenable to that. And she might. I'm not sure if that's going to be enough for her to want to see you after traveling to see one of her sisters presently. 
I don't think you understand what she's doing right now. Uh, she's with me. Endelin, which means when she returns, she's going to be furious, angry, tumultuous. Her emotions are going to be quite unruly. Information about you say hither, so you must mean Bevlorna. I don't know if that will quell the rampaging emotion she's going to feel. You had something that you could provide her presently, you could help calm her, that could open the door to a more amicable conversation, and maybe then she would want to talk about Bavlorna. What, uh, what's she looking for? How am I to know? Well, don't you know her super well? I know she hates her sisters, she hates Will of the Feywild, and she hates children. Well, what does she like? <laughs> to sew? To create? Well, uh, I have this all that I stole from a sister. Would that give a pleasure to know that, uh, she could sew, make holes with this thing that once belonged to her? Oh, I'm sure it would. I don't think it's going to do what you want it to. And well, I got these. And I'll pull out the two, like, uh, burlap dolls that, uh, of Granny Nightshade and, uh, Endelin that we found. Uh, oh, look at those. Those are quaint. <laughs> also stole these. So you're big on deception and stealing. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate that you're providing some honesty, even if it took a bit of work to get you there. <clears throat> I'm trying to help you. I truly am. Well, give us some ideas. I, mean, I, like, I have. I've told you what she hates, but you, you keep saying the same thing. I can provide things her sisters used to own. And that, I'm sorry, it's just not enough. Well, she hates care. what? She hates kids. Out of care. She what hates... was her plan? We're just supposed to, like, talk to her. To keep her so you're occupied. supposed to distract her so that the children outside could be rescued. She's not even here to be distracted, so you could imagine the children outside being rescued. That plan's probably going off without a hitch. Your job was to rescue the children inside and to get, and get the, the portraits. And the portrait. Oh. And or... Mm, yeah. And if we can't get the portrait, you know, at this point, eh, who cares? I'll come out of the bathroom. <laughs> Some crybaby cried all over the place in there. <laughs> Anyone got any allergy meds? <laughs> I'm, I'm allergic to, uh, I'm allergic to stuff in here, I don't know. <laughs> You're probably <laughs> allergic to being a bully. <laughs> I'm stuffed with wool, so it's possible you're allergic to wool. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. How it, unfortunate. Anyways, uh, why don't we talk to the kids? Are you the like, taskmaster? Are you the pit boss of all the children? Well, from a certain point of view. Yeah. Uh, what, can we borrow them? No, of course not. <laughs> Once you're done using the restroom, you must go back to the parlor. Um, well, I still need to go, so I'll, I'll, I'll go on in. <clears throat> I'll open the door and... It's covered in tears. Oh, there it's are there moist. are um, there are wads of. Uh, um, it's balmy. <laughs> it's 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 you. The barometric the, pressure. The, is. the mirror is uh, is uh, foggy, um, and there are um, there are snotty, you hope towels all over the Some floor. Cry, baby. It smells um, like the sea. Some little bitch. I'll, uh, if there's a sink in there, I will take my coat and I will just try to like, I'll just spend my time in here trying to scrub the stains out. Uh, if and they're still it's, there. It's been past an hour and you, you find it very easy to remove these stains. Oh. They basically Close. flake off. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, uh, fucking Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that your deceitful friend is in in the restroom and no longer trying to pull the wool over my eyes, that's a joke because I'm made of wool. Well, the insides oh, of me are. Very clever. What, what have you be been doing horrific. since you've, you've come to thither? Uh, you know, uh, we've just been uh, getting killed by the Jabberwock. What? <laughs> You've seen the general? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. It was really Wait, bad. It was pretty terrible. Oh, yeah, we're not killed by the devil. He means <laughs> it was so scary, we almost died of heart attacks. No, I think we literally oh, No, we literally got killed by the Jaws <laughs> and bailed on the train. Yeah. yeah, he's been gone for two minutes. <laughs> uh, that's so horrifying. You were able to make it out of that situation. That's so cool. Yeah. What else have you done? Uh, walked, walked around, saw some things. <laughs> we met the unicorn at a unicorn <gasps> beach. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we hung out at unicorn it's beach. It's so awful what happened to her husband. Yeah, yeah it was really terrible. sad. It was really sad. I she's, really she's, wish she's Granny Nightshade unicorn. would let him go. What? Yeah. What? Hmm? Yes. Oh, where'd yes. you let him go? Where is he? We could see him. He's upstairs oh. in the bedroom. What we, the heck? Right now? Right now? Yes. There's one floor up? Okay, hold oh, on. Technically a couple floors up. How many buttons do we have to give you to take Mr. Krammy to see this unicorn? Torbeck cannot overstate how much he loves unicorns. Well, if your friend were as nice to me as you are and were willing to have polite and honest conversation, I'd be more than willing to do more things for him. Okay. It's not that he's not willing. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's he not about will. Try. It's a skill issue. He just doesn't have the ability to. He okay? has such a pleasant voice, though. Right. Have you he sounds heard, quite nice. Have you heard the tale of the frog and the scorpion? <laughs> No. <laughs> well. Oh, here we it's go. It's Krimi the Frog of the Scorpion because he told me he was not a crocodile but an alligator, so I don't think he'd like being called either one of those things. Allow me to regale you. All right. The frog was chilling at Unicorn Beach <laughs> and was about to swim over, and the scorpion comes up and says, What to do? How to do, <laughs> Miss so Frog he's the Lady? Scorpion. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And he said, hey, can I hitch a ride across Unicorn Lake uh, so I can get away from Unicorn Beach? Uh, my tan is is getting a little crispy. Ew. And Frog was like, whoa, that sounds pretty crazy because uh, if you'll sting me and then we'll both drown and die. And then the scorpion's like, nah, what a dude, that's crazy. Would you kindly put me across? I would never do that. Never do that. And the frog's like, well, whatever you say. So they both leave uh, Unicorn Beach. The scorpion's chilling on the frog's back. And then, shocker, twist of the century, the scorpion stings the frog. Why would the scorpion do that to the poor frog that was trying to help it? And the frog is like, ah, what? Scorpion, gosh, you're sucking sudden in, but inevitable betrayal. How could you? We'll both die. And then, uh, LMAO, said the scorpion, LMAO. <laughs> and they both die. That's and the so moral of the story is that it was in the scorpion's nature to sting the frog. So it is Kremi's, uh nature to lie he can't help it so i believing in the sanctity of nature and beasties being a druid or something <laughs> must accept Kremi for who he is lies and all even though he gives us into a lot of trouble well i'm not sure how i feel about the scorpion killing the poor frog but i do understand accepting things for the way that they are like your big hairy smelly friend. Yeah. It's so sweet that you accept him for the way he is when so many would not be around him with the swirling stench. Yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So many terrible things about Katoblepas. <laughs> and it's so nice to see that you've befriended one and you've even domesticated him. Torbeck's a bugbear, not oh. a cat of 
<laughs> pee something. <laughs> we have definitely not domesticated him. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't. My apologies. My apologies. I really appreciate the conversation that we're having. It's nice getting to know you. It makes me feel kindred towards you. Yeah, I mean, so I feel like we could be best chums. Yeah, and so like, what else have you done while you've been in thither? Uh, you know, we there was a walrus. Uh, yes. we met an old lady. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, what else did we do? Was that hourglass thing in thither or no, that was something else. Oh, that wasn't it. We met some singing mushrooms. Uh, Mr. Oh, Grammy, yes. Mr. Grammy, Mr. Yeah. And you all done in there? What? And then, oh, and then we met some crawfish. We met some yeah. crawfish and they were like, slap. And then we killed them and cooked them and ate them. <laughs> that was pretty yummy. They're delicious. Oh, I we... don't eat, but I heard they're delicious. Yeah. All right, what? And what, we what? met free and we met free pixies. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we're feeling a little frisky. <laughs> oh, there are yeah. a lot of pixies and, here. Yeah, there are. And I was like, oh, there's three of us. And then Gideon's like, well, I don't, who's for the rest of them? <laughs> You're big enough, like, you look like you could handle uh, ten pixies. Oh, well, I feel like ten pixies could handle me. Uh, sucks how it ain't. And then Krim was like, well, what did he do? I never, I never seen something so awful before. Mm. The, the moment that, that sounds just happened. like him. The moment the door opened, <laughs> Krimi is coming out. Yeah. I What's the fucking like, emergency? Oh, Mr. Krimi, I'm so glad you're finished. I uh, wanted to tell you that our good <clears throat> friend said there's a unicorn here. I'm sorry, there's a what? Oh. I'm not telling you anything. And if you would be willing to be kind and, and apologize. honest and apologize, you can meet the unicorn, maybe. Well, I can't watch that. I'm going to the bathroom. Hold it in, Gid. If you what? can take us to the unicorn, then we should leave right away. Yeah, Gideon said he doesn't actually have to go anymore, what and the? it's much more important that we see the unicorn. <sighs> Well, I'm sorry that I tried to use my magic to uh, manipulate you against your will for eight hours. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you for the apology. Yes, let me tell you about the unicorn. So, what happened was that the horn was stolen from the unicorn. Uh -huh, yep. Then that got stolen from Bavlona. Yep. And now the unicorn is simply just a, well... She uses it as a mount now. It's a rocking horse upstairs in a bedroom. Oh my god. And where the horn what? used to go is just an empty spot. And to make sure her sisters could never find it because it's very, very powerful, she created a memory ruse and now people think that it's hidden in Yon. So people keep going to Yon to try and find it, but they'll never find it there because it's upstairs as a rocking horse. You're telling me the unicorn that's in Yon is actually up fucking upstairs. Oh, yes, it's a wooden rocking horse now, but you can't animate it unless you have the unicorn's horn, and who knows where that could have gone. <laughs> hey, you're telling me that there's a unicorn mm -hmm. upstairs yes. at this present time, Yes. on this day, and all you need is the horn to reanimate there it? There is so much I know that nobody else knows because I never sleep and I sit on the shelves all the time. And what happens if it's reunited with the horn and it, it gets animated? It becomes the unicorn again. And then Pavlona has no control over it because unicorns are so powerful. And he's incredibly old and incredibly powerful, far more powerful than any unicorn I've ever seen in my entire life. And Tor Torbeck is sweating a little. And, and presumably... very wide. <laughs> This unicorn would grant great favors uh, oh, uh, to anyone that, that that freed him from such a torment. It is nothing but pure agony for a unicorn to be ridden around like a like a steed, and it's not even that way. It's been turned into an inanimate object. I can still see the life behind its eyes. Mm. Ah, you should take us there right away. Yeah, I would love. I would just love to see it. Just I've never seen I a know. unicorn before. I mean, but yeah. I but I couldn't. That, that like there him. is only one way. One way to get up into that room, and that is with the most private of meetings with Bavlona, and I don't mean anything sexual by that at all. <gasps> it's just simply <laughs> that that's where she would take the meeting. One so, so super secret. If someone had captured Will of the Feywild. Which is funny, because she doesn't even understand what's okay. going on there. Well, why didn't you fucking say so? Don't cuss at me. Well, I apologize. Oh, my gosh. 
Who has the knife? Yes. Uh, the thing is, she doesn't even realize that Will of the Feywild is an Oni. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what in the hell?